I am finally back with a new tutorial for Lightmatica 1.14.4. Couple quick things to go over before we get started. Shaders no longer work for the latest version of 1.13.2 Lightmatica, and they also do not work for 1.14.4 Lightmatica. You can also now use Schematica files in Lightmatica 1.14.4 which is great because you now no longer need to take a roundabout way of getting your old builds back into later versions of Minecraft. Right, first things first, press M to load up the mod menu to make sure it's loaded, exit out of there, then press M and C to load up the configs menu. One thing here I have changed is load entire schematics to true because I don't use large scale schematics, you won't want this true if you use really large scale schematics because it may not look great on your world or may have issues loading. So yeah, don't use that if you use giant schematics. Another thing I have is pick blockable slots up to eight from I think five because I just like being able to have multiple more blocks in the pick block available section. And I've left the tall item to default which is a stick so we'll quickly grab one of those, and then we can get started. Once you have your stick, the first thing you're going to want to do is move the mode down to mode 1 with control and scroll wheel to area selection. There we go. Now once you're here, press M and S, click new selection, and call it whatever you want. For this I'm going to call it tutorial. Click OK, and now do not click this because if you deselect it, it will not work. Make sure you still have it highlighted because it even tells you that it's highlighted. Exit out of there. Now you have two selection boxes that are inside each other currently. Hold Alt and scroll wheel. It will move in the direction you are facing depending on which way you move the scroll wheel. Move it to the corners you want. Selected, and then to select the other box, middle mouse click. You can change this in the configs. And move it until you have the entire thing selected. Missed a little bit there. Let me sort that out real quick. Down one more. And there we go. Entire selection has been selected. To save this, now you're going to press Control alt s which is the default. Save it. It is saved. It should say it's saved. Exit out of there. And now you have your base selection. There is also an extra setting that you can use for this. Selection saving if you want to immediately use the schematic afterwards. So let's open up the config menu again. Go to hotkeys. Scroll down until you find the original left control, alt and s, and then look at save area as in memory schematic. Choose a hotkey to use this, I'm going to go control s. As you can see it is set to that. Now if I do control s, it creates an in memory schematic. You click OK, and now that schematic is preloaded for placement, ready for when we get to the next step. Another thing that is available in the selection is if you want to make multiple selections for one solo schematic, you can press M and A, and then you get two more selection boxes, which you can then use to make another selection for the same schematic. It should then save in the same file, and then you have two selections rather than one. Now that we are done with the selection, press M and S once again, and click the dash. It will disappear, and you no longer have the area selection available. Move over to an open area, change the mode to schematic placement, press M and P to bring up the manage schematic placements menu. Click Loaded Schematics, where we will find the in-memory saved version of the tank that we just saved. 
as you can see, in memory only. To load other schematics, click load schematics. And here you will find all of them. For now, we will just use, whoops, we will just use the one that we already have loaded. Click create placement. As you can see, mine is transparent. Default will not be transparent. You have to change that in the configs menu under visuals. If you're wondering, it looks like this if it's not transparent. So it looks like it is actually just a block, which is quite hard to tell what is going on when you're placing the schematic in. I highly recommend turning translucent blocks on. So you move this in exactly the same way as the placement boxes using Alt and scroll wheel. Move it into position. I'm going to have it slightly up so that it actually can be put down properly. Now in creative, you can paste this in. However, I'm not going to do that just yet because I'm going to show you some of the other features like M and L which shows up the well, the material list. And as you can see, I don't have any of the items required. Then M and V brings up the schematic verifier, which I will use once I've pasted it in to make sure I have all of the items in here, because if I start it now, it's just gonna tell me I'm missing everything. Another thing you can do is Press I for info overlay. And as you can see, it shows you all the blocks. Can't really show many because there's water there everywhere. Then there's also M and page up or page down to change the layer mode. Preferably, I would recommend using single player, single layer. And then you can change the layers by using page up to go up and page down to go down. Now, let's change it back to full. To place this in, you are going to want to go into your M and C, go down to hotkeys, click a key under execute operation, set that to whatever you want, change the mode to paste schematic, press whatever key you have selected, it will paste it, and it is fully interactable, everything is existing as it should, and now I will show you what the schematic verifier does if it can notice it's it, it is missing a block. So let's press M and V, start verification. As you can see, it detects that it's missing a block. Click it, it will tell you where that block is missing. Another little thing you can do is if you need to reload your schematic at any point, Press M and F3, sorry, other way around, F3 and M, and it will refresh the schematic. Another useful thing for placing in schematics is the configuration menu to configure the direction or height of the schematic itself. To do that, press M plus P, then configure, or press the dash on your numpad if you have one. Brings up the configure schematic placement menu, in here, you can change the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the schematic. You can lock the schematic, ignore entities. So if there's mobs or anything in the schematic itself, you can disable seeing them. You can move it to player. You can rotate the schematic to any direction you want. You can also mirror it. Can also have other access to the material list and the schematic verifier along with schematic placements. The first extra feature I'm going to mention is M and R which completely disables all rendering of the mod except menus so if you use control scroll wheel or alt scroll wheel or anything to do with the tool it will not work just simply use M and R to bring it back again. 
There's another couple of things that do pretty similar stuff. So M and G just disables the schematic rendering. As you can see, the lines of the schematic are still here. You cannot move it. Oh no, you can move it, never mind. I was just in wrong selection menu. In the stick, press M and G again to bring it back. You can press M and I to disable the info rendering. So if you come over and press I, it does nothing. It's a pretty difficult thing to use in the first place, so personally I don't use it. But now it's activated again, if you press M and I again. Another thing you can disable is the tool itself with M and T. Now the tool no longer works, so as it did with M and R, control, scroll wheel, and alt scroll wheel do nothing. The tool is back to being what it normally is in Minecraft. M and T once again, it is re-enabled. Something else you will have seen me use earlier is a way to toggle the transparency of blocks without having to go into the menu. To do this, press M and C, go to hotkeys, come down until you find here, toggle translucent rendering. I have that set to numpad 7, you can set it to whatever you want. I also have a setting to delete extra selection boxes if I accidentally create more with M and A. So you can just select those boxes, then press the delete key in my case, and it removes them. That does it for this tutorial, hopefully you found it useful. If you have any extra questions, please ask me down in the comments below and I will answer as well as I can. Make sure to check me out on Twitch, feel free to join my Discord server in the description below, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.